Good morning, everyone. My name is Karen Vale, and I work with the Eclipse Foundation. It's my absolute pleasure to welcome you all to the Eclipse Virtual IoT and Edge Native Day. We have a lot of great presentations over the next six hours, and we hope you're looking forward to your day. Let me kick things off by introducing you to our first speaker, Frederic Debien. Frederic is the IoT and Edge Program Manager here at the Eclipse Foundation. His presentation is Eclipse IoT and Eclipse Edge Native, Making Sense of the Puzzle. Over to you, Frederic. All right, thank you, Karen. And thank you everyone for being here. Maybe it's a bit early or a bit late for you, so we really appreciate uh, you to be here. So the, the whole point of this presentation is to give you an overview of what we have in our IoT and Edge Native ecosystem. And then most of the presentations for the rest of the day will uh, dig a bit uh, deeper in some aspects that I will discuss in my, uh, in my presentation. Uh, so one important thing before I get to my own content is to uh, tell you that um, EclipseCon, our uh, annual conference for the Eclipse Foundation, will be a virtual event for this year. And so we run from October 19 to 22. Uh, the call for papers is open. So if uh, you are an IoT developer and you wish to, um, to submit a talk, uh, there is uh, still time. And uh, at the same time, obviously, uh, you, you, you'll be able eventually to register to attend uh, this uh, virtual event um, that we will run in October. So for more information, please uh, visit uh, the event's uh, website. And another thing I want to attract your attention to is the little green button uh, that we see at the bottom of the screen. Uh, so when you click it, this will bring you to our uh, annual IoT developer survey. So the survey runs till June 26. But if you have 10 minutes between two presentations today, uh, it doesn't take much more time than that to fill it. So please participate. We need to understand what your needs are. We need to understand. Um, you know, what the kind of projects you are working on in order to deliver you the best IoT building blocks we can. And so this data is really invaluable for us. So please participate to our developer survey. All right, on with my content. So if you are not familiar with the Eclipse IoT community, and this is just IoT, we have distinct working groups uh, for other things as you will see in this presentation, but just IoT. At this point in time, we have about 8.2 uh, million lines of codes, 45 projects, 42 member organizations, and, and uh, a great number of contributors. So uh, open source committers that spend time uh, building various projects. And the whole point of this presentation is to give you a taste. Now, when we look at our member organizations in the IoT working group, you will see they are a very diversified bunch. Uh, there are big names there like Huawei, IBM, Intel. Uh, there are smaller names uh, like uh, Cedalo, Aloxi, uh, that are uh, really uh, startups uh, in our ecosystem. And many other uh, players, uh, other nonprofits, other um, open source organizations like the Dash 7 Alliance, the Linux Foundation, etc., and Open Robotics, uh, the masterminds between the robot operating system. So we are a diversified bunch, uh, but really what we're trying to achieve here is to uh, have a common vision. And that common vision is inspired by our three strategic members, Bosch, Eurotech, and Red Hat. Now, when we consider the Internet of Things, essentially there are three things or three categories uh, to think about. First are the connected things, so those uh, connected objects with little microcontroller board and that kind of stuff. Then there's the cloud, and in the middle, there is edge computing, which is relevant to a lot of um, IoT use cases. So my aim in this presentation is to survey each three of those categories and let you know about the main projects we have in each. So with 45 projects, I don't have the time this morning uh, to cover every last of them. So uh, unfortunately, uh, you won't see everything. So I had to pick or be a bit selective here. Uh, but if you want to see the whole list of projects we have in Eclipse IoT, and this includes what we have in the Edge ecosystem as well, then you can go to iot.eclipse.org slash projects and you will, you will have the full list. Okay, so what do we have uh, for connected things or embedded devices? 
uh, roughly speaking, three things. First, uh, we have hardware abstraction layers. Then we have tools that help you manage and update the devices. And finally, we've got developer tools. So hardware abstraction is really, really important when you think about a connected object. Because essentially, well, when you think about it, uh, the little more microcontrollers you put in those objects, they are cheap, but um, certainly they all have their own little hardware characteristics. And the problem is when you think about an IoT project, you have to think not for six months or even for six years, you have to think in terms of decades in the sense that um, you want to support your project over the long term. If you build a digital building and you have to open all of the walls uh, every two years to replace the sensors or the batteries, it doesn't make sense, right? So it's important uh, to have stable hardware and software there. And uh, the problem with hardware is that obviously over time, uh, whatever hardware revision that you have, whatever CPU that you have, or whatever board you are using uh, will be discontinued. So one way to mitigate your risk there is to use an hardware abstraction layer. So the MRAA or MRA and UPM projects, they do just that. Those are projects from Intel that are very mature, run on Linux and uh, on the Zephyr uh, real-time operating system from the Linux Foundation. And essentially what they enable you to do is to have a stable API that abstracts the characteristics of the board in the case of M uh, MRA and uh, they abstract your sensors and actuators in the case of UPM. So great uh, libraries, written in C, you integrate to your application, and then you get this uh, abstract hardware abstraction that will enable you easily to switch your MCUs, to switch your boards, and, and then keep uh, your software more, uh, more consistent over time. Now, uh, getting it into the other categories, uh, we've got plenty of tools, uh, both on the server side and the client side, in order to manage and update your constraint devices. Uh, so Lesson, for example, is a lightweight end-to-end -end implementation, both on the server side and as a client, written in Java, that you can leverage. Then if you want to uh, get a bit um, in more complex scenarios or scale a bit, then uh, the Hogbit project from Bosch is certainly one place to look at. So Hogbit is already used commercially in the Bosch IoT suite. It's already updating on a daily basis, you know, hundreds of thousands of devices. So it's really a great uh, solution that goes uh, a level above what uh, Leshen can do with Lightweight end to end And then there's the Eclipse Hara project. Uh, you will have a presentation about that uh, uh, in a few hours uh, from uh, Nicola Gloria, but essentially Hara is a starter, uh, a starter implementation of a Nogbit client that you can leverage in order to get your devices to integrate with Nogbit uh, more easily. Um, and then there's the Wakama project. Uh, the Wakama project is a C implementation of lightweight M2M once again. So uh, since Lesson is in Java and Java is not lightweight, it, it won't fit on the time of the of the most tiny uh, MCUs. So if you have a very limited board, then uh, going the C route uh, is the right thing to do. And Wakama is a fantastic uh, client implementation for lightweight M2M. And in another perspective, we also have Eclipse Kura and Eclipse Kapua. So Kura, Kura is software for gateways, and Kapua uh, is the cloud platform that goes with it. And together, they provide you a device management environment as well. And so that's a different approach based on Java and OSGI, but certainly worth a uh, quarter of your time. And Eurotech have been very really successful in the market, delivering solutions structured about this. Now, uh, one new thing that we've got is uh, development, uh, development tools. So as you know, the Eclipse Foundation has traditionally been uh, very uh, centered on development tools. And now we have expanded in many other places like IoT and uh, edge computing, but uh, we care a lot about the developer experience. And then uh, our, uh, one of our newest projects in that space is Embedded CDT. It's a set of Eclipse IDE plugins that you can use in order to get an environment uh, really targeted at embedded and IoT development. So it will install for you ARM and RISC-V toolchains and that kind of stuff, so it's great. It was formerly known in the Eclipse marketplace as GNU MCU. And now we have, uh, we have received a you know, that code has been contributed to us and we renamed the project Embedded CDT. So it's uh, really a great uh, toolkit to get you started there. So that's what we have in the things space. 
Now focusing on uh, cloud platforms. Um, we have plenty of technologies in that department as well. Um, first, um, the digital twin pattern is certainly very influential and very popular in the market right now. And we've got a duo of projects that are really fantastic implementations for that. So Ditto is your digital twin uh, runtime and Vorto is a tool essentially that enables you to model the properties of IoT devices and then uh, share those descriptions in a repository. Uh, and uh, if you go to vorto.eclipse.org, you will see, you will have access to that public repository of uh, device definitions. Uh, both Ditto and Vorto are uh, once again part of the Bosch IoT suite, so they are used uh, heavily in a commercial perspective, but you can get uh, all of the core technology uh, as open source at the Eclipse Foundation. Then obviously, uh, two of our more uh, popular projects really uh, bring a good layer of connectivity uh, that you can use. Uh, and you can use that obviously on your local network or in the cloud or everything, uh, everywhere in between. Uh, so Californium is certainly the leading implementation for the co-op protocol written in Java. And then we've got uh, Mosquito, which is uh, very, very popular and implements uh, the MQTT protocol. Um, but, you know, getting those brokers and servers is one thing, but typically my recommendation is certainly to uh, put some message rotting ahead or in front of those uh, brokers uh, and servers. And the reason for this is simple, because today uh, you may have, you know, a single backend, but tomorrow, you know, people will ask you to integrate your IoT data with other backends and applications. So having, you know, a routing platform in front is really useful. And here, Eclipse Ono really shines. It supports uh, multiple protocols inbound, and then uh, we route everything internally uh, using the very reliable uh, AMQP publish and subscribe protocol. And finally, um, We've got a, a brand new project called Eclipse Stream Sheets that's really a different take on analytics. Uh, Eclipse Stream Sheets gives you uh, literally, uh, you know, a spreadsheet-like interface like you would get in Google Sheets or, or uh, even in Excel, uh, if you think about it. Uh, but the difference is that Stream Sheets out of the box is able to integrate with real-time IoT data flows, and so it's maybe a useful troubleshooting tool for, for even an IoT developer. I know that uh, certainly it could be used for that. But the real great thing about it is that you can literally give this to a non-technical user. Obviously, you need to do a bit of configuration of the data flows. But after that, they will use that as they would use any other spreadsheet. But the real thing is that you, know, you write those formulas, you create those graphs exactly like you would do. In, uh, in Google Sheets uh, or other comparable platforms. Uh, but, uh, you know, all of the technical details about the IoT data flow are hidden. And at the same time, the data flow is real time. So you type those formulas and you see the numbers change according to your sampling rate. So it's really a great platform. And later today, uh, we have a talk about what edge native is, and we are using stream sheets as a, as a case, uh, kind of case study to illustrate uh, how you can run your applications on the edge uh, using Eclipse technologies. So please, uh, please join that session later to learn uh, um, a bit more about uh, both Eclipse IOFOG and uh, stream sheets. Now, uh, it's great to have connected objects, connected things, and it's great to have uh, cloud platforms. However, uh, there are problems if you try to just go straight from the thing uh, to the cloud. And uh, one of those problems is obviously to pick a protocol, uh, you know, the appropriate protocol to establish the connectivity. So there, the Eclipse Foundation has plenty of client libraries that will implement, you know, any IoT protocol you can think about. Uh, so the main ones, you see them on the screen. So we've got, once again, Californium as a co-op client. Uh, in DDS, uh, we've got Cyclone DDS, and Cyclone DDS is very popular in the ecosystem for the robot oper operating system, or ROS. Uh, so it's got uh, lots of uh, fans over there, but you can use it really every, anywhere that you can use DDS for. Uh, for MQTT, we've got PAHO, and PAHO is great because it goes hand in hand with our Mosquito broker. Uh, we've got OPC UA with Milo, PPMP with Unid, and we've got even a brand new protocol that we call Zeno, uh, 
um, that is really targeted at edge computing scenarios and is leveraged, in fact, by one of our edge computing platforms. So uh, all in all, whatever need you have for IoT building blocks, we have the type of um, building block that you need. Uh, and uh, with this wide coverage for various protocols, uh, we probably have the most comprehensive toolkit uh, you know, of uh, any other uh, open source IoT organization. Now, uh, MQTT uh, is a very dominant protocol in the market, very popular, and for, uh, I mean, lots of reasons. I mean, it's been around for more than 20 years. It's mature, it's stable. It's been designed uh, from the ground up for environments where connectivity is spotty and account stuff. The problem with MQTT is that it doesn't say anything about the payloads. And so if you buy a robot, uh, speaking MQTT, and then you have a software stack, a software backend that speaks MQTT, out of the box, they won't be able to interoperate because they have no common understanding about the payloads. So this is why uh, we have uh, accepted uh, a while back at the Eclipse Foundation uh, a specification and implementation for a new protocol you know, that goes on the top of MQTT and brings additional value. And the name of that protocol is Spotplug. Uh, so Spotplug is both the name of uh, the specification, uh, the name of the technology, and the name of the working group we just started in February of this year in order to uh, steward the evolution of the Spotplug specification. And what Spotplug does, is, it's really fantastic. Essentially, it defines three things. It defines standard payloads, standard topic structures, because MQTT is a publish and subscribe protocol, and the place where you publish is called a topic. And so out of the box, you, you can decide you know, to create any topic you want. But this means if your robot pushes uh, you know, its telemetry data to a topic called telemetry, and your uh, software backend expects something on a different topic, you have to do configuration or even some custom code in order to get that uh, to be connected together. So by defining standard payloads, standard topic structures, we reduce the time needed for the integration in the case of MQTT-based projects. And on the top of that, we also implement with Spotplug uh, session management, so you can have stateful conversations over stateless messages. So it's a great uh, specification, and it's got already an implementation in the, in the um, in the Eclipse Tahoo project. Uh, so uh, Tahoo offers implementations, if I remember well, in Java, JavaScript, C, and Python uh, for Spotplug, and obviously more are to come. So if you are uh, curious about Spotplug, you can, uh, you can have a look at the working group's uh, website at uh, spotplug.eclipse.org. Uh, so Spotplug Working Group, as I mentioned, has just been launched in February. Um, and the founding members are an interesting bunch. So we've got companies like SiriusLink, Inductive Automation, IVMQ that were already members of our IoT Working Group. And then we've got on board O-Ring and Canary, other players in the industrial automation space. And we've got Chevron. So the fact that we've got such a big organization joining the Spotplug uh, Working Group uh, means that they care very much about the specification and implementations. And we have several other uh, industry players uh, that are uh, at various points, uh, you know, in, uh, in the membership process. So you can expect uh, announcements in the next few months uh, from other big industrial players there. And the trend is really interesting because this is not just a bunch of technology company talking about technologies there. So we have real world players come on, coming to the table with uh, real world requirements that Spotlog will be able to implement. Now, we've got the things, we've got the cloud. And as I mentioned, we have plenty of libraries that implement uh, support for various protocols. Uh, but the problem, if you go straight from things to cloud, uh, I mean, when you think about it, if you don't have an intermediate layer between the two, uh, latency, bandwidth, the sampling rate, the cost, all of them will be problems at one point or another. Uh, latency is the easiest to understand. I mean, you know, if you have, I don't know, a factory or an oil and gas refinery, and you need to close this valve in 40 milliseconds, otherwise uh, the whole plant will explode. You don't have the time to go all the way to the cloud and back to receive a command 
uh, that decides that the valve must be closed. You need to you know, bring that decisional power uh, closer to the point, uh, to the source of the data in order to reduce the latency uh, and, and make the whole system more predictable. Uh, in the same way, if you do video analytics, you don't want to send a, a full HD uh, video stream 24-7 to the cloud for analysis and then get some results back. Uh, that would be wasting bandwidth. So there are lots of IoT scenarios where essentially it doesn't make sense to go straight to the cloud. And so the answer to that, obviously, is um, edge computing. So you put edge nodes in the middle, you bring storage and compute power closer to the source of the data, and then you make more timely decisions, uh, you know, in a variety of scenarios. And this helps you to save bandwidth, to reduce uh, latency, and obviously to have a solution that overall would be uh, much more cost effective. And in that department, that's why we launched what we call the Eclipse Edge Native Working Group last December. And the focus of this working group is not blueprints, it's not proof of concepts, it's real code that you can use now in order to, be, uh, to build edge computing solutions or do real world production uh, edge computing deployments. So that's why we say that our approach is code first. So we weren't discussing abstract architectures, but we literally have two uh, real world uh, production quality uh, edge computing platforms that you can leverage uh, today. Uh, and I will tell you a bit about those uh, in a few seconds. Uh, the whole point of this working group is really to simplify and streamline edge uh, mass deployments, because uh, you know we think that essentially you cannot do a small edge deployment. If you take that approach, you need to go all the way, but then uh, it's really difficult to scale everything and keep device updated and that kind of stuff. So we need something that will you know, help uh, our um, our users uh, to tackle those uh, challenges. And ultimately, the vision for Eclipse Edge Native is really to concretize this vision we have for Edge Native DevOps. Most of the edge computing solutions currently in the market are really focused on infrastructure. And it's great, you need infrastructure. But this means that developers are often an afterthought. So in our case, we start with the developer vision and then make sure that the platform will deliver the infrastructure that the developers need in order to run the applications. And uh, DevOps here is really important because we think that the right approach to edge computing is to take the concepts of cloud native and then adapt them to the edge space. And that's what edge native is about. And so DevOps is obviously a big component of uh, both Cloud native and edge native. So uh, the founding members for the edge uh, native working group are really a diverse bunch. Uh, you've got uh, uh, Edgeworks and Edilink that contributed the two edge computing platforms that we have to the Eclipse Foundation. But then you have Bosch and Siemens, uh, industry giants, and IT companies like Eurotech, uh, Huawei, Intel, and Kinetics that uh, round up the bunch. So once again, this is not just a pure group of uh, IT players talking to each other, but really we've got industry know-how. And in fact, uh, in the last few meetings of the edge computing, uh, uh, the edge native working group, we discussed requirements for telcos, for uh, the connected car. So lots of uh, use case uh, focused discussions in our working group to ensure that our platforms really fulfill the requirements of real world uh, scenarios. And the two projects we have in that space are Eclipse IOFOG and Eclipse Fog OS. So IOFOG is con container orchestration at the edge. And its main concept is what they call the edge compute network. So essentially, uh, networking details are abstracted from um, you know, the developer. And when you want to de deploy an application, all you have to do is uh, essentially to have descriptors that will tell the platform what microservices are contained in the containers you're about to deploy and how those microservices are wired. And the platform takes care of the underlying networking and all of that. And it, in its newest version that will be released soon, IOFOG 2.0, uh, IOFOG will integrate the Scopper uh, project from Red Hat in order to uh, enable um, edge to edge connectivity 
uh, without having to have VPNs and other complicated uh, technologies in the middle. Uh, so it's a really a fantastic addition, uh, the Scopper proxy. And that's the very last uh, presentation we have today, uh, you know, uh, the Scopper project from Red Hat. And then we've got FogOS on the other side. So FogOS is a different take on edge computing, where essentially FogOS defines an edge com a unified compute fabric from the microcontroller to the edge to the cloud. And it manages all of those resources uh, you know, in a unified way. So your application can contain you know, the cloud code, the edge code, and even the binaries you would deploy on a microcontroller. And you can push all of that at the same time in order to deploy an application. So it's a different take from IOFOG, uh, but both of those projects really have real world implementations, uh, real world uh, customers as we speak. And it's uh, they are open source. You can download them today and get started uh, right away. No, so, Things, Edge and Cloud, uh, we've got things for all of that, but our toolkit at Eclipse IoT is a bit even wider than that, in the sense that we've got a few, a few things that are not building blocks, but what we call vertical applications, so uh, specialized solutions for various markets that you can leverage in order to deliver solutions. Good examples of that are 4D Act, for example, which is a programming environment for PLCs, and then uh, it comes with a runtime that you can deploy on the PLC to run the code. Eclipse uh, Keepel is a platform uh, leveraged by uh, the SNCF and RATP in France, so the National Railway and the subways and buses in Paris. Uh, so they leverage that in order to implement contactless uh, ticketing. Uh, Eclipse Cooksa from Bosch is a whole platform for the connected vehicle. Uh, specifically, we're talking about uh, the entertainment system and that kind of stuff. And Eclipse Voltron from PNNL, so that's the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory in the US, is a project uh, that is a distributed uh, energy management platform that you can, well, PNNL is using that on their campus, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, lots and lots of buildings in there. And uh, they have uh, real world uh, partners and customers deploying that in digital buildings. So it's a fantastic platform. Now, uh, what I showed you is what we've done up to now and the current members we have. But, you know, we need to grow our community, so we need you. So my message to you is to please become an Eclipse Foundation member, join our IoT, Edge Native, and Sparkler working groups as, a stra as strategic members, really, uh, in order to make an impact on our roadmaps and tell our community where to go in order to fulfill your requirements. And please contribute to our open source projects. You don't have to be a member uh, for that. So we accept uh, pull requests uh, all the time from outsiders. Obviously, if you become involved at some point, then after a few pull requests, maybe you can even join as a committer. So whatever uh, you have in mind, please uh, come work with us and build the open source IoT and edge computing ecosystem. Uh, at this point, uh, we have about two minutes left. So if you have questions, uh, please use the ask a question feature, put them in the chat. I will be uh, you know, looking around um, in this session to answer over chat um, one, once the broadcast is over, uh, any question you would have. And uh, have a look at our websites, join our working group meetings. We are a very open community and we need to hear from you in order to build the best technology we can. So thank you so much for attending this session. And if there are no questions right now, uh, well, thank you. Great, thank you, Rick. That was a great start to our day. <coughs> We can uh, certainly see that you were a teacher in a previous life, um, and we see all of your passion for IoT and Edge Native in your backdrop. So thank you very much. As Frederick said, you can use the chat all day to ask questions. Um, now we'll have about 10 minutes to get set up for our next presentation. If anyone joined late, um, Frederick's presentation will be available on our YouTube page. Um, so you can watch it in, in its entirety. I know it was a bit early for some of you on the Pacific Coast. Yeah. So, and if ahead. you don't have questions, uh, but uh, you have 10 minutes before the next presentation, now is the right time to fill our uh, IoT developer survey. So click on the big green button at the bottom of the screen, and uh, this will bring you to SurveyMonkey.
Great. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. And thank you again, Frederic. My pleasure. Thank you, Karen. And uh, have a fantastic day of presentations, everyone. Okay. Bye now. Bye.